It is now my privilege to introduce to you a man that we at the School of Optometry are extremely proud, a man that the profession of optometry in Australia is extremely proud, Professor Brian Holden. Well, thank you very much. It is a very uh, almost emotional experience to uh, be involved in this particular day. Uh, those of us that have worked in this field for a long time have uh, finally reached what we consider to be uh, this turning point in uh, where we're going. I was talking to uh, Monty Rubin last night uh, over dinner prior to the uh, five or six bottles of wine that we consumed and uh, I said to Monty, I am really uh, pleased and for those of you that don't know, uh, Professor Rubin is a distinguished professor from the University of Houston and uh, former director of the cornea research unit, contact lens research unit and contact lens department at Morphe. Hey, it's, uh, it's wonderful that you've taken the trouble to be here. And he said, well, I know what it's like trying to put something together and I can appreciate how long it's taken you to get to where you are now. And I wouldn't have missed this day for any. And uh, to him and to those other colleagues who have traveled from long distances, uh, Ken Kenyon from Harvard University, and his colleague Judith Lockyer, uh, Dick Pearson from City University, uh, Nathan Efron all the way up from Melbourne University, uh, Gallipolo Rao from uh, Rochester Eye Bank, uh, Bjorn Wolfing from uh, Sweden, Karolinska Institute, and last but not least, my uh, colleague uh, Auntie Van Ass from Helsinki in Finland. I really appreciate the fact that you people took the trouble to come here to uh, share with me this day that uh, I'm really going to enjoy. Uh, as mentioned, uh, the relationship between industry and academia and applied research is becoming a little bit more blurred than it used to in the past. Uh, universities used to be ivory towers full of academic wankers who sat up there and pontificated about the basic nature of life and uh, when you tried to get into uh, research that was of applied nature people would say well yes but that's very interesting but uh, have, have you got any basic publications and it's a tough area for someone to get into and people have said how come the CCLAU in Sydney is world famous and uh, people look to your unit to, uh, to get work done. And I said, well, it's very easy because uh, in academia, there are no points, uh, generally speaking, for getting involved in something as applied as a contact lens. It's viewed by many universities as a cosmetic or a, a, uh, some other form of frivolous pastime. And in fact, of course, the contact lens uh, is an extremely complicated uh, device uh, relying on the understanding of uh, physiology and biology and uh, fluid mechanics and so forth. And it is a very interesting uh, academic problem. But the fact is that in uh, traditional past years, people who are interested in such applied problems uh, did not get much uh, credence at universities. And I can say that I am very pleased that uh, at this university you can see the results of lack of opposition. Uh, formerly, uh, the former head of school, Professor Lederer, uh, did not in any way interfere with the growth of the CCLAU. Professor Collins, since he's been here, has been extremely supportive. And although we've had our minor differences on the size of the letters and the sign, School of Optometry and Cornea Contact Lens Research Unit, the uh, fact of the matter is that it is, uh, has been a very symbiotic relationship uh, since he arrived here. I could not have had better support. And it may interest you to know, and perhaps I'm, I always speak out of line on, on most occasions, but this building that we're occupying now used to have a transport and highways engineering department housed inside it. And uh, a falling out between the leader of that group and uh, the professor of the school led to the demise of that unit. There's a lesson there somewhere for me. <laughs> and there's a lesson there somewhere for Barry, I think. We, I think it's a question of who's gonna get replaced first. But uh, we've had tremendous support, I've had tremendous support, and the whole CCLAU has had tremendous support from uh, Barry Common. The uh, university up the hill, uh, which we sort of think of as the bureaucrats and the other people up there who sort of make these decisions that control our lives, uh, tend to get a fair bit of bucketing from academics who try and do something. And uh, you may have read in the Australian 
uh, one of the other research groups at this university, uh, their leader decided that he'd had enough of uh, di trying to do research in Australia. The fact of the matter is we found uh, the university administration to be extremely flexible and uh, have helped us enormously in uh, getting our task uh, underway. We've had our little differences of opinion uh, as time went past about uh, how quickly we can push things, but the uh, Professor Burt and Professor Golden, Golding in particular realise, I'm sure, that uh, as Senator Ryan from the Ministry of Education keeps saying universities much be must become more relevant, must seek outside funding, and they have accommodated us as much as anyone could consider to be reasonable. The academic standing of this place has been, uh, if you like, developed uh, in my own personal perspective from the cooperation and the colleagues that I've worked with in research over the years. And I personally would like to uh, thank them. And I know this is a little difficult to uh, go through these lists of people. I'm sure to leave someone out. But uh, George Mertz first came here in 1980, our first international visitor. And uh, George and I had a very uh, stormy and uh, enjoyable association. Uh, before he uh, took seven times the money and went to work in industry. Uh, George uh, and I produced a number of uh, important research papers along with John McNally. Uh, it's no uh, coincidence that something like 16 out of the last 25 papers we've submitted for publication have been co-authored with Auntie Vanas. Uh, Auntie and I met in uh, a conference in uh, Tokyo, or in uh, Kyoto in Japan, about 1978 and Auntie was very interested in the endothelial work that we were doing here and grew up an association between us uh, that I have come to value extremely highly. Uh, Dr. Van Ass, uh, who is uh, standing over there in the blue suit, for some reason all our international visitors are standing up over in that area. Uh, Dr. Van Ass has been a, uh, a worthy colleague and a worthy uh, opponent on many uh, adventures in research that we've had over the years and uh, it's a, a great pleasure for me to have him with us today. Uh, closer to home, uh, my work with uh, Monty Rubin and Michelle Guillon has led to uh, a long association and I had uh, uh, some conflict um, but they're great people and they run the best animal research facility I would say before you can do it, as they often do. <laughs> Rachel and Stuart and Mark and the other people who are support staff here uh, fill in all the gaps in the organisational ability of everyone else, which is saying something. And to support staff uh, such as Marion and Carol, Martha, Colleen, uh, who are sort of organisation and administration, uh, they've done a fantastic job. Uh, and Beverly in, in uh, Adrian's area. I'm very pleased that uh, Madeline Scott is with us today. She's uh, she ran the CCLRU when there were the three of us back in 1976 and it's very nice to see her with us today. To my uh, colleagues up here from the Optometric Vision Research Foundation, um, about 1973 Brian Leyland suggested we go out with tins on the street to collect money for research and uh, that's probably as high as his aspirations were at that stage that we should perhaps go on street corners and sink. Uh, but the matter of uh, the OVRF and its support is given in cash to the university, $1.6 million over the last four or five years. And uh, to Brian Leyland and, and the chairman of the OVRF, my long-time long -time colleague Charles McMonies, Jack Alexander, John Davis, and particularly Adrian Flanders over the years, they've formed the backbone of the fundraising organisations that have supported the CCLAU. We are very fortunate to have with us today a number of people from industry, uh, particularly from the international industry. Uh, Rick Franz from Borsch and Lom, uh, Rick Weisbach from Ciba Vision Care in the United States, Sue Bilton from International Hydron, uh, Mike Schuler from 3M Corporation, Ron Seeger from Cooper Vision, Rod Watkins from uh, Solar International, Craig Wilhelm from Allegan, and uh, of course our own Australian company representatives uh, are here today. And these people have made uh, a long journey to be here to support us. There is um, something to be said for an industry where the practitioners, the optometrists in Australia, 85% of them signed up to give a dollar for every pair of contact lenses they bought into a national fund to support research. And there's something to be said that for uh, seven or eight major international corporations who put in uh, $40,000 a year open doors money just to keep the CCLAU uh, functioning and providing its information, 
that sort of industry is an industry where there's a healthy growth and it's not um, a coincidence that the number of contact lens wearers in the world has gone from maybe 2 million to about 40 million in the last 10 to 15 years. And it's that sort of uh, attitude and that willingness to invest in the future of research and the understanding of the business that has uh, led to the development of CCLAU. Finally, when the university said, um, we uh, want to relocate you out of the two rooms that you occupy in the School of Optometry uh, to this building over here, we were horrified. Because if you have a look at uh, some of the other buildings around here, which I suggest you don't do, uh, and you walk through them, that was the sort of state that this building is in when we, when we first were approached. And uh, I said to the people at the time that we were not interested in moving over here unless we could have a world-class medical facility type building. And uh, Alan Craig, who's the university architect, and David Lewis, who's in charge of property, and Ray Overall, who built the inside of the building, are the people who are responsible for turning it out the way it is. They uh, spared no effort to try and accommodate everything that we wanted to do. Uh, Ray Overall and his group, even to the extent of um, accidentally breaking the old toilets so that we could have some new ones, um, which I'm sure caused some trouble up the hill. But um, <laughs> that sort of effort went into it because they were proud of the fact that they were relocating what they considered to be an important research facility and they really worked the way it is. And we had an unnamed uh, international visitor who came down to the CCLRU and we'd been arguing with this company for a long time that they should take a longer view and invest some money in research. And um, this particular executive from this company walked through the building and he said, this is the best thing, best thing I've seen in contact lens research in the world. How much do you want? It's the only time in my life I've been short of words. <laughs> and I went for 10,000 instead of 40,000, but uh, we did get the 40,000 eventually. Today's uh, function has been uh, organised uh, by the CCLAU administrator and I'd like to thank uh, Peter Ryan for his tremendous amount of work that went into today's uh, activities. Uh, I even uh, uh, was worried this morning about the weather and Peter said, no, it's okay, the sun will be out when you talk, which was uh, pretty well organised. He's got obviously access to higher authorities than I have. But it's been a tremendous effort to get this day roll, rolling through and uh, we appreciate it. Finally, I suppose it's worth uh, just commenting where we think we are and where we think we're going. And uh, along those lines, we, uh, we have uh, been pretty active in trying to develop our understanding of contact lenses. But the fact is that over the last 10 to 15 years, the whole business of vision research has taken off. We've, talk we've talked uh, briefly about this this morning in a, in a press conference. But when we think about maybe uh, 10 years ago, there were no intraocular lenses. Today, it's 85 to 90 percent of all patients in the United States being fitted with intraocular lenses. Surgical procedures uh, to correct myopia and so forth were just uh, a thing that was practiced in South America or Japan or Russia or some other strange part of the world. When we talk about uh, the devices that people have been uh, developing now, such as uh, extended wear contact lenses and bifocals and lenses to correct astigmatism, the fact of the matter is that there's a revolution taking place in this whole business. It's taking off so rapidly that the secret of our success appears to have been that we seem to ask the right questions in advance of other people. We are pushing now towards uh, greater involvement in diagnostic instrumentation so that we can understand and predict what should be done to the eye better. What are the visual consequences of the procedures that are being uh, envisaged today? And it's that area that we'll be pushing into next the fact that we've been able to understand the physiology of some of these devices and chart directions for the future uh, has been a tribute to all the people who have worked at the CCLAU. Finally, um, and I'm not going to tell a joke because I don't know any decent jokes, but uh, we got a telegram this morning from uh, Bob Hawke who said uh, from the Department of the Prime Minister and Cabinet, Professor Brian Holden, School of Optometry, University of New South Wales, I'm pleased to add my best wishes to you and all those associated with the Cornea and Contact Lens Research Unit at the University of New South Wales on this most significant occasion. The move to larger and more suitable premises is recognition of the outstanding work the unit has done over the past five years in the field of vision correction. Support and encouragement you have received within Australia and overseas will be a spur for the unit to continue its important research work and enhance its already proud record. The results of the unit's endeavours can be seen in the many people in the community whose enjoyment of life has been greatly improved. 
signed Bob. 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 Um, well, we, we appreciate the fact that uh, he took the time to uh, send a telegram. Uh, we appreciate the fact that Lionel uh, took the uh, time to uh, make his apologies. We do appreciate uh, the ministers uh, coming out here today to uh, officially open this building. And we certainly appreciate, or I certainly appreciate, all the efforts that uh, people who I know, who I've worked with, uh, both in the, in the academic world and the industry world, who are here today have taken the trouble to be here. I thank my colleagues in Australia for their support, and I'm very proud and very pleased to be here today. Thank you.